It's good to be with everybody tonight. We're few in number, but nonetheless, it's a good place to be. Sure. Uh, turn your Bibles with us to the book of Matthew in the 24th chapter. If you would like to follow along, we are blessed to get to preach on one of my favorite topics tonight, the rapture of the church. We've preached on it many times, and I love when this topic is on my mind because, frankly, it's the, one of the, or probably the main thing that my my heart and my mind look for in this day and age. Uh, before we get started, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Father, we bow before you today, and as we look at the word of God, we just ask you, Lord, to place your hand upon us, God. We pray, Lord, that uh, the word tonight would just uplift us, God, that it would ignite a fire within us. And, Lord, if there be one here that is not ready for thy return, God, may they make preparation this night. We ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. The rapture of the church, you know, that's what we're all looking for. Um, I'm not lost on the fact that I don't know exactly when the rapture is going to take place, and no one does, as we'll read here in just a little bit. But I'm, I'm not looking for the grave to see. I'm looking for the return of the Son of Man. And the reason I'm looking for that is, frankly, because of the shape that the world is in today. Yeah. Now, we look at the Matthew chapter 24, and Jesus has been preaching and teaching about his return. And he tells us this in the 32nd and 33rd verses. He says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. A parable is a story that is meant to tell a heavenly truth in an earthly message or an earthly teaching. Jesus here later on, he is going to tell us plainly that no man knows the hour or the day. But what he does tell us, he tells us to look at the time around us. He says, now look, if you look at the fig tree and when you understand that the branch is getting tender the leaves begin to shoot forth where well, you can plainly understand that summer is getting close. Yeah. And then he says, so likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. The world today, I, I don't need to go into too much detail with all of you. It, it's pretty plain for us to see that the world is not like what it once was. And when I say that, I don't mean that it's getting better. The world has vastly, vastly changed from the times of the 1980s and 1990s and the early 2000s. My goodness, we have went so far from the times of the 1970s and 1980s where our land saw a great revival down throughout the ages. We have drifted so far from that. The world today seems to be topsy-turvy. I was told by a local pastor just yesterday, uh, this local pastor, their church also has a nursing home ministry, and he had one of the older preachers in the church preach the last nursing home uh, service that they had. And I guess after the service, someone from the nursing home called the pastor of the church and told him that that particular preacher uh, is banned from preaching at that nursing home now because he had preached against homosexuality. Now think about that. They said this preacher can't preach the truth. Don't tell us the truth, they said. We don't want to hear that. That's the day and the age in which we live today. Jesus said these words in the 36th verse. But of that day and hour knoweth no man no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. I remember a song my grandmother used to sing. She would sing the song, Son, go bring my children home, for I want them gathered round my throne. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it looks like up in heaven, but I imagine that one of these days the Father is going to look over to the Son, and maybe he'll speak those very words, Son, Go bring my children home. Amen. None of us knows the exact day. None of us knows the exact hour when that is going to take place. But we can recognize the time period is what Jesus is getting at here. And the time period that Jesus gives us 
is found in the 37th verse of Matthew 24. Jesus says these words, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Jesus says that the time that the Father tells him to come back, the world will be so very similar to it was in the days of Noah. Now I want to read a little bit from Genesis chapter 5 and chapter 6 for just a moment to remind us of what the world was like. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 5, the 28th verse and part of the 29th verse, it says, And Lamech lived 182 years and began a son, and he called his name Noah. At that moment began the days of Noah. Now what was it exactly like, though, in the days of Noah? Well, the Bible tells us this in the 5th verse of Genesis chapter 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Right. My friend, may I say that we live in a time that if it's not there, we are almost to a time where the imagination of the thoughts of man's heart is evil continually. I mean, my goodness, look at the things that our youth are bombarded with today. The things that their minds are bombarded with. Look at how we have come to realize as a people that those who are in control of our governments of the world are probably involved in human trafficking and child trafficking. Yep. I mean, that has come out to us as regular people. We now see that. It is plain out in the open. We see how at, by just the, the mere fingertips uh, a young person can view things like pornography. We see in our day and age, and not just our day and age, but in our area, how Satan has used drugs to get a hold of people, to absolutely rip them and tear them apart. Jesus said the days of his return would be like it was in the days of Noah. Now, he also said this as well, though, here in Matthew chapter 24. And this is an important verse. It almost sounds like he is making a different statement from the book of Genesis, but he's not, as we'll see here in just a moment. He says in the 38th verse, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, why is that important? When we think back to the story of God calling Noah. Noah finding grace in the sight of God. And by the way, how did Noah find grace in the sight of God? The book of Hebrews says it was by faith. It was by faith and it was by nothing else. And by faith he obeyed God. By faith he listened to that voice in his heart. And God said, Noah, I will send judgment. I will send a flood. Build an ark for the saving of yourself and your household. And the word of God te teaches us. That for 120 years, Noah preached the word of God. The New Testament calls him a preacher of righteousness. Amen. And during that time, can you imagine? Can you imagine for just a moment? Noah had to have gotten discouraged at times. Because for 120 years he preached. But he saw no one repent. Except himself and his household. He preached and he preached. Now, why is that important for us today? It's important for us today because look at the churches around us in our nation. They are quickly becoming empty. People aren't getting saved like they once used to. Now, that's not on God. No. The Word of God says, Whosoever will may come and take of the water of life freely. Just in the past few months, we've had lost come here. The word of God has been preached. They have raised their hand. They've been under conviction. They did not come. Jesus stood outside Jerusalem. And he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how oft would I have gathered thee together as a hen does her chicks under her wings? But he said, Ye would not. I would, but you would. Today, the Word of God is still going out from pulpits all over this great nation and all over the world. And we tell people, God loves you. 
We tell people Christ died for you. We tell people God wants to freely forgive you. Come to Him. But you see, we live in a day and time where man wants to rule his own destiny. Just as that preacher was told he's no longer welcome to preach at that nursing home, so today man has gotten to a place where he doesn't want to accept that God is the ruler and that God is the one that says what is righteous, what is holy, what is sin, and what is iniquity. God is still the one sitting on the throne and listen to me. I had to get to a place in my life when I got saved. You know what? There were sins that I enjoyed. Things that appealed to the flesh. But the fact of the matter is this. I had to get to a place where I said, you know what? I'm not the creator of the universe. God Almighty is. And you know what? It has to be His way or the highway. My friend, the world today doesn't want to hear that. But that is still the truth. God says you must repent and believe. And there is no changing that message. And just as Noah preached the word of God, just as Noah invited people to escape the coming judgment, so many people refused to listen. And I would imagine that during that time period, I would imagine there was probably a lot of fun poked at Noah, wouldn't you? Oh, amen. I mean, as we look into the book of Genesis, what we see is we see the creation of man. We see the fall of man. We see man serving God, but as time went on, man slowly drifted away from God to the place that they were before the flood. What do we see in the world today? We've seen a time in our nation's history that our nation was on fire for the Lord. People would come to the house of God. People would get saved. People would attend revival. But you see, they made fun of the message that Noah preached because they didn't like it. They didn't want to hear it. And so in order to feel like they belonged to something, they would all get together and make fun of it. We tell people today, no, God isn't going to send a flood, but God is going to send His Son back one day in the clouds of glory. At one point in time in our country, that message was respected. People may have still rejected it. They may not have accepted it by faith. There was a point in time that people would come to church and they would remain lost, but they knew what the truth was. Yeah. That's a strange thing to think about, but that's, that's the way it was. But now we've gotten to a place in time where people make fun of the idea of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, coming back in the clouds of glory. But you see, the times that we live in is mirroring the times that Noah lived in. And I can assure you that one day, the Son of God is going to come back. I don't know what day. I don't know if it's before the rapture or before the tribulation or during the tribulation. I don't know. But what I know is this. Jesus said, watch and be ready. That's the command for everyone in the church. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm not looking for anything else other than Jesus. If I see the Antichrist, fine, I see him. I ain't looking for him. I'm looking for the one to come back and split the eastern sky. Are you ready for his return is what I want to ask you today. Because you see, as the word of God was preached in Noah's day, Jesus says this. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. In other words, they were just living life, not giving a second thought to God. Not thinking about coming to the house of God, doing it their own way. But he says they did that until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then it says this, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When Jesus comes for his church, it's going to be very similar to that. People won't know what's taking place. People won't understand what's happening. It's going to be a fearful thing on the earth when that happens. Jesus describes it like this in the 40th and 41st verse. He says, then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, he says. For you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now the reason I think about the rapture so much. 
is because there is a, a great and glorious hope set before us. I'm not going to preach a whole lot longer. But you know, we had a lot of prayer requests this evening for those who were sick. We had nursing home service last night. And uh, pretty much everyone there was in a wheelchair. One lady used the wheelchair as a walker, but she still had to have a walker. And if she got tired, she would sit in a wheelchair. We hear about sickness we hear about trouble, we hear about heartache. But the Apostle Paul wrote us a, a little bit about what's going to take place, and we can't fully understand it. But he wrote to us in 1 Corinthians 15, in the 51st verse, and he says these words, Behold, I shew you a mystery. Yeah. Now it's a mystery because the human mind cannot fully grasp and comprehend all of this. But we are still told what is going to take place even though we can't fully understand it. And he goes on to tell us this. We shall not all sleep. In other words, all of us here tonight, we are alive. We're not asleep. Jesus could come back tonight. He says, but we shall all be changed. Sure. And that's one of the glorious things about his coming back is that we're all going to be changed. Now, I'm not as mature as some of you here tonight. And so I don't have some of the problems that some of you have. My dad always says getting old is not for sissies. But I, I do have a few issues. My knees mainly is, is what bothers me. Um, we were kickboxing today and uh, one of my contacts fell out. And I had to call time out and go put my contact back in. I have horrible vision. If I don't have contacts in or glasses on... You might as well forget about me seeing anything. I can't. And of course I have to take my, uh, my uh, medication every day for mental illness. Uh, if not, we're not okay. But if we take it, we are okay. That joke will hit you later. But all of us got issues. All of us have problems. Some people have great, great struggles that they're going through. That they face daily. I was listening to someone preach recently on the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians where it talks about his thorn in the flesh. And where that particularly where it says a, a messenger from Satan to buffet me is what Paul said. And this person who knows Greek way better than me said the idea behind that word is to, to get punched and beat on every single day. There are Christian people whose bodies have betrayed them and they're in pain all the time. There are people that struggle immensely. Brother Tim was speaking about his childhood growing up. There are people who struggle monetarily. There are people who have so many different issues. But on the day that Jesus comes back, we will be changed. There will not be a struggle anymore. There will not be a pain anymore. There will not be any type of problem anymore. Now, it's hard for us to imagine that. It's hard for us to picture that. That's why it's called the mystery. But rest assured, it's going to happen. We will be changed in a moment, it says, in the twinkling of an eye. It's all going to happen. You ain't got to do just like how you got <laughs> saved by God's grace. You ain't got to do nothing for this. He's going to do the change. And it says at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. You know, we have seen throughout the years brothers and sisters be called home from this church. And I've had family members who are Christians who have been called on home to be with the Lord. And we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know where they are. And they are doing way better than we are. But you know what? Those, those bodies, they died because of the frailty that sin brings to them. They got sick. They got weak. An accident took place, whatever the case might be. But when Jesus comes, the Bible says, the souls of those who sleep in Jesus, God will bring with them. He's, they're with him right now, and they're coming back with him. Soul and body is going to be reunited. When it's reunited, it will be raised, and it will be raised incorruptible. Whatever it was that took the body to the grave will never touch it ever again. The problems that we have will never, ever face us again. We will 
we will all be changed. I want to ask you today, do you have that hope within you? I mean, I, 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 I am being 110% honest when I say this. I have no clue when the Lord is returning, but I believe 100% we are living in the age in which it's going to happen. Sure, amen. And I ask you, are you ready? Are, if, if it were to happen tonight, are you ready? If it were to take place within the next minute, would you be sitting here by yourself? Jesus said two would be grinding at the meal, the one taken and the other one left. Would you be left sitting in the church if you came back within the next minute? Are you prepared? Do you have the hope that the problems of this life will one day be completely over and you'll be in perfect peace and joy? If not, we want to invite you to come as we stand this evening.